So last time we were talking about um, Venn diagrams and sets and stuff like that. Uh, one of the reasons we're kind of doing that is because we're going to talk about <clears throat> probability. This is actually for the next two weeks. Um, so probability is the basics and the background for a lot of uh, statistics, uh, which is actually my uh, main field. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about uh, uh, probability and chances of events happening and stuff like that. Um, if you have any questions, just bug me real quick and we can uh, work on it. Let me make sure I have everything up. I am doing another one through Jamboard. I will go ahead and download the PDF when we're done and post that on Canvas for you all. Uh, let's see where am I at? So, on to probability. <clears throat> so we're going to talk about probability, or basically the chances or the idea of how things may or may not happen. Uh, it's one of the reasons I have all these guys here. Uh, I play a lot of games that are based on chance. Uh, and we have a couple different things we want to talk about. Um, the first is the different types of probability. So one of them is this part right here, a subjective probability. Uh, I'm just going to guess what may or may not happen. Um, I can't verify it, but it may happen. It may not. It just depends on you know how you think about the person giving you this part. <clears throat> so an example of subjective probability is um, uh, Let's go. Oh, I got one. This is actually kind of kind of funny and true. Um, I'll say the Cardinals will, will the Cardinals will win the Super Bowl because when I move from a city, a sports team wins it all. This has happened, actually. This is kind of true. Um, like, I moved from St. Louis the first time, and the Cardinals won the World Series. I uh, moved down to Arizona, and then from there, I moved from Arizona to Washington State, at which point the um, Diamondbacks won the uh, World Series. Then I moved to another place. Uh, like I moved back to, to Missouri, Illinois area, and then I moved again, and then the Blues won the Stanley Cup. So there's like this weird thing as, as I move around the world or around the United States, the team I'm following or the team from the city I'm in will win something. And since the Suns lost in the uh, NBA Finals, obviously it's going to be the, the Cardinals who are going to win, who are actually 6-0, and and it's kind of creeping me out because it's happening again. Um, so that's objective probability. Is there a way to test it? Is there a way to say it's going to happen? <clears throat> Other than my weird life where this has happened everywhere I've been? No, that's objective. It's going to happen because it's happened to me every time. I can't test it. Uh, so another time <clears throat> would be an experimental probability. So I can repeat an experiment. So I could take a coin, flip it over and over and over again, and if it comes up heads, about half the time. And then if I do, it should also come in, up in tails at this ha half the time as well. Uh, one second, somebody's bugging me. Um, so that is experimental. I can test it. Uh, so that is experimental probability. Um, so when the weather reporter says there's 10% chance of rain tomorrow, so they do this based, they say based on prior evidence, it's something different that we're not getting into. So on similar days, one tenth of the times this has happened in similar days, we've had rain. 
And so that is experimental. I can repeat it over and over again. And from that, have an idea of the probability. <clears throat> the third one, and this is the one where you're going to end up doing the most work, is theoretical probability. So I have, uh, this is basically the chances of a, something, an event occurring, and I had to do math around it. So this is what we're going to end up doing a lot of. Uh, so we have a situation, like we'll do the dice, or not the dice, the, the flipping a coin. So we have an, uh, a set number of times, I'll flip a coin 10 times. So the possible outcomes um, of that are given as M. So if I'm going to count, um, sorry, sorry, N equally likely outcomes are possible. So if I have a coin, I have to, a just as likely outcome of getting a heads as I do a tails. So that's important. So heads and tails are as likely. So we have two outcomes. That's the N. I'm sorry, the M. N is the number of times the outcome occurs. So if I have a coin and I want to flip it, I have a possibility of two outcomes. So on a coin, actually this is on the over here. <clears throat> so we have a coin. I have two sides of a coin. And if I say heads, I, one of those two outcomes is heads. Um, if I say tails, one of those two uh, is going to be a tails. So one half has been, or you have one over two. Uh, so, uh, this is where we started working about. This is where we started dealing with stuff like dice. So we have a six-sided dice. So six-sided dice, do I not have a six-sided dice? Oh, and I don't want to go and run and get one from the front. Uh, six-sided dice, so normal dice that you play games with, not my weird D&D dice. Um, we have a sample space, which we've kind of did, dealt with before, of one to six. Uh, we have some basic events. So we can, the event itself is uh, the, the output, like I roll the dice and what I get. In this case, they say we're gonna roll a one and we're gonna roll a five. So those are the simple events, the things that happen when I actually do it. Uh, so simple events is just the actual results. Uh, an event, not a simple event, but an event is I roll a number, I roll a dice and is bigger than four. So those are some of the different things we're looking at and what we're talking about. If I'm going too fast, just uh, stop and let me, uh, or ask me questions because I know I'm kind of rambling. This is kind of my field. So I'm kind of a little bit more animated as you can tell. <clears throat> Plus I love, you know, gaming. So, we have a six-sided dice. So when, when you do these, uh, so our M is going to be that six-sided dice. Okay, so all here, we have these weird things pop up and it would be kind of freaking you out if you have no idea what you're looking at. And I, so P with any type of parentheses is the probability of an event happening. So in this case, we have P of rolling a one is, is the probability of rolling 
a one on a six sided die. So how we do these, so we know we have that M <clears throat> and we know that each event is just as likely given it, it's called a fair die. So a fair die is one where essentially if I roll a dice, each event happens as much. Um, the best way to get fair die is to go to Vegas because they have fair die because they don't, they actually can only roll a certain number of dice, which uh, dies a certain number of times before they have to come out and all kinds of nonsense. Anywho, so I would have the same event happen. I have the same chances of the event happening. So because of that, that N is the one. I only have one outcome where it is possible. So my probability of rolling a one is gonna be equal to that N, which is one divided by M, which is six. So I have a one in six probability of rolling a one. <clears throat> so the second half, and this is where I hate to say this, doing a little bit more work may help, especially if you have multiple parts. Uh, writing out the events, or sorry, the, um, the samples, or the out, or possible outcomes. Right? So if I write out the possible outcomes, so if I roll a dice, I can get a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, a six. Those are all the numbers that I can get when I roll a die, a six out of die. Uh, the probability of rolling a number greater, bigger than four is the second half. So what I'm gonna do at this point, and this is kind of why we did it. So the numbers I can roll that are bigger than four are five and six. So when I do this, this is my M. And so the, sorry. N of M. And then the number in this one, yes, I know I did N of N. Makes no sense, but that's it. So the number in this set goes on top. So I have, once again, so P greater than four. So I have two numbers that are greater than four. And I have six numbers that I can, six numbers I can roll. So our probability of growing greater than a four is two and six, which we can turn into by just uh, simplifying it <clears throat> down to one and three. And so I have a 33% chance of rolling a five or six or something greater than four. Any questions? And there is all kinds of stuff online for this, especially considering there are games that roll play off of six sided dice. So not dealing with dice, but let's say we have 20 cherries, 14 of them are sweet, six of them are sour. So if I pick a cherry at random, what's the probability of a sweet? So once again, if I want to do the uh, outcomes, uh, spell. So I have, uh, let's see, I'm gonna do T equals sweet and S equals sour. So the 20 cherries are going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 13, 14, one, two, three, four, five, six. This bit right here. So we have a vast number of them that are 
sweet and a lot of them, a decent number that are sour. <clears throat> so one of the reasons I kind of do this is if you look at them, you can see which one's more likely to happen just because you're visualizing it and you might have an idea of what your number should be. Because some people work that way. My wife works that way. So our M is going to be equal to how many sweet cherries we have. Because we have quite a number of sweet cherries. Like so. So our N is 20 and our M is 14, <clears throat> which gives us a probability of a sweet is going to be equal to 14 over 20, which is going to be equal to 7 out of 10. <clears throat> so we have a roughly 70% probability of pulling out a sweet cherry. Does that make sense? More or less, everyone asleep? I wish I was. Anywho, standard deck of cards. No, no jokers. So I played games yesterday and I use this all the time. Uh, so we have 52 cards in a deck. We have four suits, clubs, spades, hearts, diamonds. Values or your cards run from ace, which is usually a one or a 13, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, a jack, a queen, and king. <clears throat> uh, jack, queen, and king are face cards. Ace is not. Um, games have their own thing. So these you'll have questions on this because we love doing cards and cards have been around forever. What is the probability of randomly drawing one card from a deck and getting an ace? So on this one, what we need to do is we have our sample space and I'm not writing all these out because actually they're written out here. So we have M of 52. There are 52 cards in a standard deck. <clears throat> then they want you to know how many aces there are right here. So we just look right here and see how many aces we are, have. So we have, and that's your N. We have four aces. So four aces, 52 cards, we can figure out our probability. So four divided by 52. So probability of an ace is four and 52, which simplifies down to one and 13. <clears throat> Another way to look at it. This is up to you if you want to do it. It just depends on how you work on it. Okay, since they're not asking for a specific suit, they're asking, is there a ace at all? What you can do is because each suit has 13 cards, you could treat the probability of pulling an ace out of a suit the same as an ace in the deck in general. So like you right here, we have a one in 13 chance. Well, there are 13 cards in a suit and then one of those is an ace. So the same probability can be applied to all of them. The second it asks for stuff like, what's the probability of pulling a black nine? What's the probability of pulling the queen of hearts? <clears throat> That's when things change. So as long as it's asking for a simple event that you don't have to change anything on, you can do stuff like that. Otherwise, I would suggest doing it this way and just making sure. <clears throat> so this leads us to impossible in certain events. So an impossible event doesn't happen. 
Uh, there would be nothing that can make an impossible event happen. That'd be like saying if I drew a, an, ex an example comes to mind. If I drew a card from a deck, what are the chances that I draw uh, a three on a die? If I am going to walk to the store, what's my miles per gallon going to be? Like I'm going to use less than four miles per or more than four miles per gallon of gas. I don't do those events at the same time. So the probability of an event happening when it can't be done is going to be zero. <clears throat> a certain probability has a probability of one. So a certain probability is, in my class, for instance, that you're not going to get a zero percent. Because if you show up one day and do like the syllabus quiz, congratulations, you have points. Um, another example of a cert, uh, certain probability is on a die, you're guaranteed to roll at least a one. So that is always going to happen. Uh, so make sure when you do probability <clears throat> that everything in our probability will go between zero and a one. You cannot have an event that happens. You cannot have a negative event. If you have a negative event, you did something wrong. You cannot have an event greater than one because that's 100%. If you do, you did something wrong. Your answer is going to be in the middle. It's going to be between those two extremes. So that's something just you need to pay attention to when you do your homework. Hey, this, this can't happen. So an example, if I draw a car, single card from a deck, what's the chances of getting a red spade? So since we have spades, do, 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 where's my highlighter? Right here. And the spades are black. There is no red spade. So the chances of me pulling a red spade are zero out of 52. There are no ways I can pull a red spade because that event can't happen. At <clears> the <throat> same time, if I am, you ever lived in Seattle? It rains a lot. So if I wake up, it's cloudy and drizzly, and the weatherman's saying there's a chance of rain is 100%, guess what? Your chances of rain are 100% because it's drizzling outside. Whether or not the uh, weatherman says it or not, it's raining outside. So the event happened, it is rainy. Um, so that all has been talking about the probability of an event happening. Another thing we care about is the idea of an event not happening. So, <clears throat> Before we had talked about rolling a six sided die um, and the probability of getting one event to happen on the six sided die is one in six. So we have, for instance, if I want to roll a six, the probability of getting a one in six or a six is one in six because that's how it works. So the probability of not rolling a one in six is five out of six. So what I do is I take 100%. Subtract the probability of an event happening, which is one in six, and what's left is the probability of the event not happening, which is five and six. So it's designed this way to make your life or everyone's life easier and to do some basic stuff. So one of the reasons that probability is between, as it was over here, two back, three back, zero and one. Because <clears throat> if we have those probabilities, we can subtract the probability from one to find the probability of that event not happening. So this is called a complement. So this is the probability of an event not happening. And we use a little dash next to the event. Um, so we kind of did, did that with sets where we had the, the probability or the set on a uh, complement of a set or not a set, same thing. Uh, the only thing different is we can have, uh, add the probabilities together and those two events combined will always be one. And you can use this right here, where you do one minus your probability of event. 
or one minus your probability of the event not happening to find the other parts. So the heck does this mean? So if I pull a random card from the deck of playing cards, what's the probability of it being not a heart? So a probability, well, the first thing we have to do is find the probability of heart. So how many decks do or how, we have? In the deck, we have 13 heart cards and we have 52 cards. Now, because some people's brains work this way, I can find the probability of heart, 13 divided by 52, which is equal to one out of four. And from that, P heart not. So one minus one fourth or three fourths. And that works. Another way to do it is I could take draw a line between the two. Another way to do this would be to take 52 minus 13 would be 39 not heart cards. So I can take, I can uh, subtract hearts from total cards to find total not hearts. So that is something I could do <coughs> if I just don't want to deal with subtract, adding and subtracting and uh, fractions. 100% up to you. Uh, so at this point, we would have 39 uh, not hearts and 52 hearts, which would give us three out of four. It does the same math. It just depends on how you want to do it. Do you want to subtract one minus a probability, or you want to subtract the number of heart cards from your total to get the number of non-heart cards? It's up to you how you want to do it. Is that kind of clear? That one's a little fuzzy-ish. So another one. So we have 28 marbles. So we have an we have from that red. We have 12 of them that are red. If I pick one marble out of the jar, was the probability of it not being red? So the probability of red. going to be equal to that 12 divided by 28 or three out of seven. Uh, from there, we could find the probability of not red by taking one minus three sevenths to get four sevenths. So that's one way to do it. Uh, the other way would be to take that 28 and subtract 12 to get 16. To get 16 not red marbles. From there, probability of R naught is going to be equal to 16 divided by 28 or 4 over 7. <coughs> so we get the same thing, just depends on how you want to deal with it. And if you want to deal with bigger fractions to simplify, you can do it this way. If you want to deal with smaller fractions to simplify, you do it this way. It's pretty much the main difference between the two. So this brings us on 
to the last topic we're going to talk about today, which is expected values. So expected values is how we can calculate whether or not you should do something financially based on what you're doing. Um, this is the most useful and the one that most people ignore. Um, so the insurance policies use this. This is how insurance companies figure out if they are worth insuring and at what cost. Uh, the credit cards do the same thing. Uh, casinos and government agencies uh, that run gam gambling, they, they live by this. And this number is calculated out for every game you play ever. <clears throat> and you can find all this information and make your decisions on what games you want to play based on how much money you're going to lose. And you will lose money at a casino. That's why they're there. So roulette. Roulette is the most hashed out statistically for this that is out there. <clears throat> we have 38 spaces, 18 red, 18 black, two green. It's fun. You they throw the ball and you can place a bet. So I put, sorry, $1 on a single number. If the number lands on the wheel, I get 36 bucks. So I get mine dollar plus $35. <clears throat> Otherwise, they lose $1. So how much money am I going to lose? So we have two things we're going to do. So our M for both of these is 38. <clears throat> there are 38 places on the wheel. Ugh. So this is a simple one. This is an easy one because we don't have to worry about the colors. So there are one space is a winner. There is 37 places are losers and you lose the money. So in order to find this, what we had to do is we had to take the chances of winning times how much you win. So we have So we have one out of 38 chance at winning. And the chance of losing which is going to be 1 minus 1 divided by 38, or 37 over 38. Which you could have found out by putting 37 over 38. <coughs> so then if we win, we get $36. If we lose, we get a negative dollar. Let me put the dollar sign. So we lose a dollar if we don't uh, with that one. And then we gain $36 if you do this. So what we do, you take these the probability times how much you're getting or not getting and multiply them. So, so 36 divided uh, times one over 38 is, let me get a calculator for this. Eight, uh, 0.95, you, you would gain on average 95 cents. 0.95, one. And the other one, one, I'm oh, sorry, 37 times 38 times, I'm oh, sorry, 37 divided by 38, times one negative, you would lose negative, oh, sorry, 0 0.97 cents. So on average, you then you add these up, You would lose two 
two cents a roll. So you're going to lose money off each one you roll. No matter what you do, on average, over time, you're going to lose money at a roulette. So that's how you figure out expected value. You take the probability of it happening. So let me write that out. So the probability of all events happening times the monetary value attached to each event. So I would lose money if I lose the game and I would gain money if I gain, if I won it. So no matter what, I have these events happen. Uh, and then you add them together. <clears throat> so another event, back to the roulette. So we have 38 spaces, 18 red, 18 black, two green. Uh, I bet a dollar on a single number. So oh wait, we already did this one. So on average, if I, uh, because of this, Wait, that's the same with the problem. So in the, uh, instead of doing it this way, we're gonna actually change this up. Actually, I'm not gonna do this one. We already have this one, so I'm not gonna do this one. Sorry. So this is, expected value, and there's a lot of stuff that's, that covers expected value. Uh, the last one we're gonna call, um, so this is just the, the basic notes. Uh, so expected value is that average gain or loss based on events uh, if you repeat it many, many times. So we can, can kind of figure out the value by multiplying each outcome by the probability of an outcome and adding everything together. Um, so if, we have a negative value, which we did there. You shouldn't play that game, uh, since on average you'll lose money. <clears throat> It'd be better to play a game with a positive value if you can find one. Um, if the expected value of a game is zero, it's a fair game, since neither side has an advantage. I think one of the few fair games out there is poker, because, or it's a fair game, I think because you're not playing the casino you're playing other players so they the casino could really care less <clears throat> they're probably going to get money based off like entry into it or you're gambling in other places when you're playing poker so uh expected value for casino games is a negative for the player which is a positive for the casino uh or else they go out of business another one that has a ne negative expected value is the lottery and i could probably look it up so the expected value for Powerball, for instance, is actually it's positive. So apparently is uh, in general, if you have a decent size uh, Powerball, it, you would have a net positive. Unfortunately, you're talking about 25 cents, which means unless you win the jackpot, you're gonna be out and you'd have to buy a lot of it. And even then you just be spending money to get the whole money back, which is a net zero game. But you shouldn't statistically gamble. It's not why people gamble though. And there are ways around it and ways of doing betting better, but if second you do so, you'll be kicked out of casinos. Um, uh, there's, I think, Rounders was a movie about that where you can uh, statistically look at events and make decisions, like especially blackjack, on whether or not you should uh, bet or not, or what you should do in specific situations. But uh, the second that the casinos find out you're doing it, you will be asked to leave and probably not asked to ever come back. So good luck with that.
with that.